Hello all, my name is Ankush Agnihotri. Today we will talk about the new Angular 14 release. Before we start, please subscribe the channel to get the latest notification. So let's start. The first thing about the Angular 14 is how we can install it. So you can install it using the command npm install space dash dash global space at the rate angular for slash cli at the rate next this command will install angular on your machine so open the command window run this command i already installed it after you install this angular cli latest version 14 what you need to do is check your version so what is the command for it and ng space version hit enter you will see your angular cli is updated to the 14 version with the next keyword to it so in this way you can install the angular 14 on your system so next is we have to talk about the angular 14 features the first feature that they have introduced is standalone component so what are standalone components basically what happen is initially when we declare any component it will be need to be registered into the app dot modules under the ng modules so now in angular 14 they have introduced the standalone components which makes this ng module as a optional component means you don't need to be include your component into this module it will be a standalone part of your application so how we can create that we can create using the following command ng space g for generate c for component your component name stand alone demo now space dash dash you have to be introduce a keyword stand alone so this command will create a stand alone component for your application now if you see this time it will only add a four application into your application it doesn't automatically register or add this component into your ng module because it doesn't need it in the angular 14 for the standalone components so if you open your standalone component dot ts file you will see you have two new keywords into your decorator one is a standalone that is a flag true or false which will define this component is standalone or not second thing is now you can import the necessary modules in the component itself for the standalone components so over here you can import the required modules that is used for your component no, no need for declare that into the app.module.ts file under your import array you can import it in the component itself so let's quickly modify the html for this component so just a nice little heading angular 14 standalone component then your title now the next thing is we need to be add it into your nav bar add it and then you using the router links then on your app.routing.module file you have to be declare this path is standalone demo now the component is standalone component so it will automatically import the required namespace for it now that's it now let's run the application okay it's saying fail to compile they said okay we have forgotten to add a comma at the end so let's save it it will compile your application and run it on the local port 4200 you will see your component is working as expected like the other components normal components so this is a standalone component demo so the next feature that angular 14 provided us is the typed form so this feature is particular for the reactive forms so let's close this first so let's say you have a component right which has a four field in it like over here contact us so you have a name email number and then a message that you want to be sent it to the respective team right so over there in the reactive form we will define its form group and then a submit click now jump to the and in the html 
for your input you will simply add a form control name attribute to it and specify a property of that particular typed form so open your component file over there we have this component form as a form group then we will declare our properties to it initially what happen is in the angular 13 we are not able to define its type it is of any type right now in the angular 14 they provide a type also we can declare a property type to bind to it now you can mention the specific data type of any property like here you have a string and number is your number and you can initialize its default value too so what is the change so if you carefully on the submit click what we are accessing is we are accessing its value now if you are in the angular 13 version then if you try to type anything like for the angular 13 you can type it like this now in the angular 14 you can see we have a intelligence over here for each property that we have defined into our form group but in in the angular 13 we don't have it it is of any type we will get to know what will be the error at the runtime means when you are if you let's say if you have a type over here so now angular 14 will automatically detect it is a compile time error so you will check it over here but in the angular 13 you will get to know when you run the application on the browser over the console you will check you have a typo error over there so in the angular 14 they have announced the type form capability so that it will save our development time also and it will be very useful when we have a nested complex components over there we have a various new features in the angular 14 like this when you are trying to access the value of any property then over there if let's say if you are trying to access like this then it says you card it might be this string property will be null so you have to be mentioned that this property might be null because when we run the code without telling them at the compile time or you can say at the browser when we run our application on the console we will get to know yeah this is the error so in the angular 14 they have enhanced this feature and also if you want to be use the old type of the angular form groups or reactive form groups you can use it using the untyped keyword like for the form group like we have a similar untyped form group similar for the form control you have a untyped form control so see the difference if I am trying to access this variable over here now I remove this question mark you can see we are not getting any compile time error right now but if we are in the angular 14 and we want to we use it the new feature then they are start throwing error right away so this is the feature of the type form that they have introduced into the angular 14 moving toward the next feature that is your streamline page title means now initially when you have an angular application if you open it you have an angular 14 as a page title over here that will be defined into your index.html file right now in the angular 14 we have a independent page title property that is implemented using the title strategy so just open the routing file over there now you have a new feature title you can simply give a title over here let's see welcome copy this now paste it over here this is contact us and this is the standalone demo so all this title property we need to be updated at the component level how we can update it using the 
title strategy class so over there you have title strategy we need to be implement this using the quick fix feature for there they have implemented override method with the router startup snapshot now over there what we need to do is we need to be first grab the page title page title then you have to be build the title what is the title that you have pass it over there using the snapshot now basically a uh, undefined check for it undefined now the next thing is we need to update the document title using the page title property that you have defined over there that's it now if we run our application wait for it okay they said it is already in use just close this again run your application let's say yes so it's generating the bundle for us so now it is hosted on this link open this now you will see you have a welcome page title when you go to the standalone your title is changes as per your component so this is a steam line page title feature next feature is extend developer diagnostic it means basically in the angular 14 they provided us the extendable framework that assists us to better insight into your template offer your potential boost means basically when we type any wrong command in your angular cli let's say you have open your terminal now instead of the ng serve you have typed this so basically they ask for this is an unknown command did you mean the ng serve yeah we mean ng serve basically so these are the improvements that they provide us in the developer diagnostic they will provide us a better toolability so that we they can we we can save our time when we are developing the application so next feature is bind to the protected component member so this means if we jump back to our component so in this component we have declared one protected member protected page welcome message that is of type string and you initiate a value to it welcome to core knowledge sharing so now we can use this protected member directly into our component html using the two way binding and now if we run our application your application
so it's hosted on this port you can see on the contact stars we have our protected member binded into our view so the next feature is ng model on push basically this is a issue going on from the previous version of the angular what happened is let's say you have a two component one is your parent component and one is your tile component and you want to be intimate your parent that we have changed something on demand basically on push so we have a nice little demo over here so you have this component on push demo in this what we are doing is let's close everything and open this two component first so in this component what we are doing is let me zoom it for you so in this we have a normal component we have template declared in it we have styles and over there we have a change detection property to it and over there we have defined our strategy on push we need to be intimate our component that this is change and this is the child component that we are calling and passing the value to it what we are doing is firstly we are passing the old value to our child component then we have a nice little set timeout function over there after 5 seconds what we are doing is we are passing a new value from the parent to the child component then we initiate our change detector so that it will be intimated to the app component this change state will be changed and over the your child component you will see what we have we have a simple nice little template where we have a value and we are using it we are input this value and over there we have one event click and over there when we click on it this value will be updated and it's triggered the change detection method so that it will be intimated finally this issue will be resolved by the author so let's test this open the terminal so if you open your console window go to your own push feature over there right now we have a old value when we click to it it will go to the child component method it updates its value again then it switch back to your parent component where you have your set timeout function and you are updating a value to it and marked it as checked so you can see if I again refresh it you will see the old value then I click to it it's changed the child value then automatically a event trigger from the parent now its value will be changed to the new value that is done from the parent component so this is a nice little feature or you can say issue resolve in the angular 14 that is the on demand push changes next is the optional injector in the embedded view basically in angular 14 they added a support for passing a injector in the embedded view as a optional thing so basically what happen is if you basically they will provide a cleaner API for authorizing or reusable component and its privilege at your application level so we will come with another video on this feature thanks for watching